what does that have to do with the fact that we're in the earliest days still? No, Gen no, AI we're in the earliest the need days. For compute but, and everything else. Okay, when it, when Jensen said that demand's insane for Blackwell, that lasted for about, you know, we had a little bit of gain, a little bit of bump. Yeah. And then today we have a bigger bump. It's like the interview occurred yesterday. Crazy temp. Um, given what is yet to come, what is just beginning to, to, to come in terms of the need for compute from these large language models, it's not just the training, which will come to an end at some point or at least slow down because you can, there's basically you've taken in all the data available, then you have synthetic data. Right. But the running of the models the themselves, the, the inference, inference is, is using enormous amounts, even with the increase in efficiency from every new version of ChatGPT, for example. Enormous increase in efficiency, but then it allows for all sorts of new things that require way more compute. Well, I, I agree. I've been a big bull, but I'm just saying a lot of people feel enough. I mean, that they're, you know, that NVIDIA stalled, that Supermicro was the worst performing stock well, in the S&P last quarter. Maybe, That's maybe it gets back to the endless conversation we have for good reason here about data centers and power. And that being the gating well, issue. I saw a GE Vernova downgrade today. That's about data centers of power. I'm a big believer in data centers of power. You know I feel about natural gas. I, I know, but my point is that it's it may not be that the, the need is not there for the NVIDIA chips or the need for the compute, but the ability to actually construct it as quickly as possible may be more difficult. Well, did you think the Accenture deal was a big deal with, with uh, NVIDIA? I, I, I don't have an opinion on it. Yeah, it did, you, did you think so it was a not, big deal? I, you need it to be not just hyperscalers. You can't build a business, and they're not, by the way, around j just uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. I like the, the deal because what it said is, is that the large companies that don't know how to use it are going to go to Accenture and Accenture will figure it out for them, or they're going to go to Dell uh, or HPE. So there's these other companies that may want to buy them, not just, not, not just Meta and not just Tesla. We did mention yesterday in your absence, though, uh, executives at chip companies selling about 1.3 billion in stock in the quarter. It's endless. Selling is endless. And uh, look, they've made a lot of money. Look, people sell for a million different reasons. And if they didn't sell and you were their advisor, I think you would say, look, I, I should resign because you've got so much money in these. That's my only explanation for it, because otherwise, why not let it ride? But they, these people have such huge gains. And they could also be saying, look, Cap, capital gains rates be going up if uh, one of the two people who gets in has got a Democratic House and Senate, capital gains going way up. A while ago, we spoke about NVIDIA, and you had said that it would some, be something that you held for years. And ever since then, you held it for a while, but more recently, you've been selling it off. How much do you have left of it, and why have you been selling? Can you see yourself getting back into it again? I've made so many mistakes in my investment career. One of them was I sold all my NVIDIA, um, probably in somewhere between 800 and 950. I think it's 1300 on that stock now. You own none today. I own none, and I, I own none the last 400 points. It was a big mistake. Uh, in terms of AI, and by the way, when I, when I saw you at that conference, which was 18 months ago, I fully expected to own it for years, but I think it was 300 and change. And um, as I also said at, at a media interview, I'm not Warren Buffett. So I thought I thought I was going, but what changed is, is it tripled in a year, and I, I thought the valuation was rich. We are big term, long term believers in AI, and there's still many ways we're playing AI, particularly the infrastructure that's been built out to support the power needed. Uh, and yes, I think NVIDIA is a wonderful company, and where the price to come down, we get involved again. But right now, I'm licking my wounds from a bad sale there. <laughs> you know, the other question I have to ask you really quickly, we don't have a lot of time, but you were t saying that you express a lot of your views through the bond market. The 10-year hit 4.1% again recently. Do you think it goes much higher, and where do you think it ends next year? Would you go very short at this rate? I don't know what very short means. Um, we shorted bonds the day the Fed cut 50 because we thought it was a mistake. Um, we still have that position. It's not so much um, I have a view on where it's going to go short term. What I, what I do believe, if, if Powell ends up being wrong here and inflation reaccelerates next year, bonds could go up a lot, a lot of basis points, hundreds. 
whereas if he's right, you might lose 25 or 30 basis points short. The golden rule I've always had is, is the 10 years should trade around where nominal GDP is, which is 5.5%. Mm -hmm. So the risk reward to me is being short bonds. Meantime, a surprising pair of movers today. NVIDIA hitting all-time highs, while the 10-year Treasury yield bounces back above 4.1%. Let's get to Mike Santoli for a closer look at that tug of war in the market. Mike. Yeah, John, NVIDIA, I mean, it really did support the indexes from uh, be, from losses beyond what we did get. The S&P 500 obviously really had a minimal move down. Would have been twice as big a drop if not for this move in NVIDIA today. Uh, you see here up 4%. And what's more significant is this potential breakout of a four-month range. We Back in June, the intraday high was uh, around 141. We did break above that today. Now, obviously, false breakouts are a thing that do happen, uh, but it's not necessarily something you'd want to bet on. Uh, usually it's pretty powerful if a high velocity stock like this finally breaks free uh, after this period of time. Obviously we have earnings, but uh, for NVIDIA not for about a month. I put the 50 day moving average in here too, because it does show that that sort of shorter term trend has curled higher. So this is at least a bit of support or, or maybe a little bit of a beacon uh, for the bulls to keep watching as you see if the market can add to these gains. How Mike, what catches my eye about this NVIDIA move today is a lot of semiconductor names were up as well, but it was up more than those. And then a yeah. couple of momentum names were higher. A lot of them were lower. And it, it was it was up maybe along with those those momentum names as well. It seems to be performing, uh, you know, like a semiconductor stock, but better and also like a momentum name, but yeah. bigger. 100%. I think it's really somewhat disengaged from the rest of the group. Uh, I've pointed out many times, if you look at just the average semiconductor, the XSD, the equal weighted semi-index, it looks nothing like the NVIDIA chart. It really is a little bit of its own species within the market. And you're right, in terms of once you get those kind of speculative juices running, or at least just some high momentum uh, kind of appetites in the market, it's going to find its way into those parts of the market. I'm not saying that somehow makes it dangerous, but it's something that shows you that it's not just moving because the entire group has caught a bid because people are bringing uh, earnings estimates up or something like that. All right. Well, let's get to a stock that Julian had mentioned. NVIDIA hitting another all-time high today. The semi-stock jumping 4%, bringing its market cap above $3.5 trillion for the first time ever. It is now just $80 billion behind Apple. It last topped the iPhone maker back in July when it briefly became the biggest company in the world, but it just keeps powering higher, Guy. Carter can opine on this. And so, so we had been mentioned in June 20th, and actually that was right to mention it in the weeks or days after because you saw what happened on August 5th. I mean, the stock went down almost 38%. Obviously, it's recouped the entire thing. And now with today's close, that June 20th engulfing pattern is out the window. Now it feels like it did back March, April, May when it started this next leg higher. With all that said, you know, the stock has gotten itself more expensive. I think three and a half trillion dollars now ish or thereabouts. They report on November 20th. So the question, I guess, is are we in a new sort of trading range and do we continue to move higher in the earnings middle of November? What do I you mean, think? Here, too, the dispersion, half the stocks and the SOX index were down today. Mm -hmm. Half were up and, of course, leading the way. And that's Julian's point. Um, a breakout is a breakout, right? So one would have to respect that. And in principle, NVIDIA has just now exceeded its high of about five months ago. The presumption is higher. Are you kicking yourself, Grasso? Yes. <clears throat> uh, in, in, How's it in, feel? In one word, not so great. So, so uh, this one didn't give me the chance to get back in. This is the problem with trading stocks. When you have an idea, you sort of fall in love with your premise and your chart and your levels. And I waited for my level. The level didn't happen. Got away from me. I'm still going to sit on my hands.